The burrito, which translates from Spanish to little donkey, was once just a regional name for taco. It wasn't until the mid-20th century that it became an entree all its own. In the years since, the mighty burrito has spread far and wide like a giant tortilla, and many different takes on this handheld cuisine have come to win hearts, minds, and stomachs all across North America. So, today we're chomping down on every style of burrito we could find. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food channel and let us know in the comments below what other classic dish variations you would like to hear about next. Okay, time to wrap this up. The term burrito first started popping up in the late 1800s around northern Mexico, where flour tortillas, as opposed to their corny counterparts, took a prominent role at the dinner table. As the burrito developed into a unique food item all its own, it came to commonly include a protein and some refried beans, along with salsa and sometimes cheese, all wrapped up in one of these comparatively small flour tortillas. And since flour tortillas remain unique to northern Mexico and the United States, people living in southern parts of Mexico Mexico today don't call burritos burritos, they refer to them as tacos de harina, which translated means flour tacos. Whatever you choose to call them, by the mid-1950s these burritos had become a staple street food in Ciudad Juarez, which being situated within spitting distance of El Paso, Texas, gave burritos the perfect gateway to reach the U.S. of A. When most Americans think of a burrito, whether it be from a local restaurant or from their favorite fast, casual drive through they're picturing the Mission-style burrito. The Mission-style burrito first came out of the Latin Mission District of San Francisco in the 1960s. By many, it's considered the largest and most versatile style of burrito. They could be huge, and they could be filled with just about anything. No, really, you could probably fit an arts and crafts store in there. Size aside, what makes these burritos distinct from their Mexican counterparts is their inclusion of Mexican rice, sour cream, onion, and whole beans. Never refried. Today, Mission burritos are common all across America, and they can be found in chains such as Chipotle, Qdoba, Chevy's Fresh Mex, Barberitos, and Illegal Pete's. While San Franciscans were busy with their loaded mission-style burritos, San Diegans spent the 1960s developing a far simpler version of a handheld meal. Their carne asada burrito is thereby packed full of marinated grilled steak, and oftentimes, the only additional toppings are salsa or guacamole, making the carne asada burrito the perfect pick for people who like meat and simplicity. One of the earliest sellers of the San Diego staple was Roberto's Taco Shop, a chain created by husband and wife power couple Roberto and Dolores Robledo. While Roberto's was an instant hit around town, and likewise today has over 80 locations in the American Southwest, it is now most known for an entirely different type of burrito. The California Burrito, the most successful descendant of San Diego's carne asada creation, made its ginormous debut in the 1980s, the Decade of Excess. Its invention is sometimes attributed to the Roberto's Taco Shop chain. However, there is some dispute over whether it was actually invented by a Roberto's knockoff brand. Regardless, the California Burrito was an instant hit and soon found love all across the Golden State. Like its predecessor, the California Burrito usually comes with carne asada and guacamole. But what sets this little donkey apart from the herd is its inclusion of cheese, onion, sour cream, and, most uniquely, French fries. That's right! Instead of using rice or beans, the traditional version of a California burrito opts for an all-American carb, although some bean and rice full variations do exist. While the concept of a breakfast burrito has been around for who knows how long, they first popped up in restaurants in the 1970s. People found it more convenient to wrap their bacon, hash browns, and eggs up into a flour tortilla than to consume each item all individually. And let's face it, it's all going to the same place anyway. Breakfast burritos got a major public relations boost in the late 1980s, as McDonald's introduced them to their menu for the first time ever. Other chains soon followed suit, with Hardee's, Carl's Jr., and Sonic adopting the all-in-one breakfast item as well. Today, almost every half-decent breakfast diner in America serves some rendition of the breakfast burrito, many recipes of which are regionally dependent, making it one of the most common burrito types to be found across the nation. Even Burger King has one. While Los Angeles is home to an endless variety of unique burritos, only one burrito bears the city's name. 
The L.A. burrito usually consists solely of refried beans, cheese, and salsa. While this may sound like a boring alternative to some of the livelier burrito varieties, L.A. burritos tend to include so much cheese that their interiors turn into messy cheese and bean stews. And nobody can argue with those kinds of results. While some L.A. burritos also include either green or red chilies, the simplicity of their recipe is their defining factor. Add too much more, and it becomes just another mission-style burrito. Another Los Angeles invention, the Korean burrito, is a fusion of Mexican and Korean cuisine. Combining the practicality of the flour tortilla with the savory deliciousness of bulgogi-style beef or chicken katsu, the sour spiciness of kimchi, and the savory sweetness of gochujang paste. It was first invented by Kogi Korean Barbecue's chief chef, Roy Choi, and it soon found a place in the Kogi brand food trucks all over the city. While the Korean burrito remains a Los Angeles staple, its cousin, the ever-popular Sushi Burrito, or Sushirito for short, got its start in San Francisco, but is now found in poke restaurants all across America. Sushiritos often contain typical sushi ingredients, including spicy tuna, salmon, or shrimp, along with seaweed, rice, nori, and soy paper. The chimichanga may just be the most indulgent burrito variant. According to legend, restaurateur Monica Flynn accidentally dropped a bean burrito into hot oil at one of her Tucson, Arizona restaurants. She then allegedly shouted, chimichanga, which translated from Spanish may have some vulgar connotations, and her accidental entree found its name. While some dispute this specific story, most historians today agree that this deep-fried burrito was an all-American Tucson invention. It soon spread all across the country and into northern Mexico, and the chimichanga grew to include a wide variety of of ingredients, from rice or beans to shredded chicken or marinated pork. Today, chimichangas are usually topped with cheese, salsa, or sour cream. While no one knows for sure where the wet burrito got its start, some point to Michigan for its wet and wild inception, while others point to Texas. It's simply a burrito, often in the mission style, that's been smothered in sauce and covered with melted cheese. While the wet burrito is undeniably delicious, it also does away with the burrito's signature portability. Instead, the wet burrito comes on a plate that is usually too hot to touch. That's how you know it's good. And you'll have to settle for a fork and knife or get sauce all over your clothes. Maybe bring a poncho. But if you don't see a wet burrito on the menu, don't despair. It may be going under a different name. Depending on where you are, wet burritos are also known as smothered burritos, enchilada-style burritos, burritos suizos, or burritos mojados. The guisado-style burrito comes to us from northern Mexico. Simple in its design, it usually contains within its flour tortilla one single ingredient, guiso, which translated into English means stew. This guiso is really just a meat, usually either pork, chicken, or beef that's been seasoned and slowly cooked using a variety of traditional Mexican ingredients. The final burrito is long and slim, but with a complex flavor profile created by its meaty seasoned interior. Like the guisado-style burrito, the adobada burrito contains almost exclusively meat. Instead of using guiso, though, the adobado burrito utilizes a large portion of pork that's either been marinated in a simple red chili sauce or has been marinated in a complex mixture of citrus, herbs, and ground chilies. The resulting meat is then grilled on a flat top, rolled up into a flour tortilla, and served with guacamole and salsa fresca in restaurants all around the San Diego area. The resulting burrito is thick and meaty, and it has an El Pastor counterpart just across the border in Tijuana. Despite what you might be assuming about the Chile, Colorado burrito's origins, it does not hail from the state of Colorado. Instead, it's a traditional Mexican dish, and it gets its name from the Spanish word Colorado, which translates into English as colored red. The burrito is likewise named after the red color of its meat, which is usually either a braised beef or pork that's been simmered slowly in a red chili sauce. The resulting meat is tender, savory, and sweet, making the Chile, Colorado burrito uniquely defined by its coloration. 
The San Francisco Dorado-style burrito is similar to its mission-style cousin, only rather than keeping a soft, floury exterior, Dorado-style burritos are seared on an oiled plancha, making their exteriors golden and crunchy. While this burrito variant got its start on the secret menu of San Francisco's La Taqueria, it has since gone nationwide. Even Taco Bell has their own Dorado-style variant, with their grilled cheese burritos offering up an overly indulgent take on the San Francisco staple. The Burro Percheron is an extra-large burrito, so big that it lost its Edo status, from the cities of Hermosillo and Guaymas, in the Mexican state of Sonora. These full-sized burros are usually made from oversized flour tortillas, often as big as 16 inches in diameter, and are often stuffed with grilled meat, avocados, chihuahua cheese, and tomatoes. It's a serious burrito. It's so big, it technically qualifies as a home defense item. They are likewise usually served with manchego cheese, vegetables, and a spicy sauce. Though variants on the dish can replace any one of these ingredients however the cook sees fit. For those in the U.S. looking to try out Burro Percheron without going south of the border, Tucson has you covered. Percheron Mexican Grill offers that same Sonoran taste, all from the comfort of the Grand Canyon State. The Burrito Bowl is the deconstruction of its namesake, and its very existence throws everything you thought you knew about burritos out la ventana. While it arguably does not qualify as an actual burrito, its popularity and prominence is more than enough to earn its spot on this list. Popularized by Chipotle, the Burrito Bowl thumbs its nose at portability like the wet burrito before it, and forces you into taking a sit-down meal. Its ingredients mimic the devil-may-care attitude of the mission-style burrito from which it evolved but it typically contains rice, whole beans, protein, cheese, corn, sour cream, guacamole, and, well, anything else you could think to throw in it. Skittles? So what do you think? What's your favorite style of burrito? And were there any we missed? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other weird history food videos.